What's up guys, welcome back. I've got a brand new video. Today we are looking at multi-digit multiplication. So that is a multiple digit multiplied by a multiple digit. Okay, this is pretty high end stuff, so check it out. Right, first, what is a multi-digit? Well, a multi-digit is any number greater than nine. So for example, 10, 11, 53, these are all multi-digit because they have more than one digit. Okay, the number four is just a single digit because it's just one digit on its own. And we can go all the way from 10 to infinity will all be multi-digit numbers because they're all gonna have multiple digits going along the place value chart. Okay, so that's very important to understand before we start. The reason that place value is so important to understand before we start is because we're gonna use our understanding of place value to partition and break up our multiple digits so that it's back into more manageable chunks that are easier for us to multiply. But before we get into it, let's review what we've done so far in previous videos to understand where we're at now, okay? So our written method started with grid method. Now grid method was really useful because it really showed us what we're doing. We're breaking up those numbers and we're answering them in smaller chunks and then putting that number back at the end to give us our final total. Okay, so that was the start, but it was a bit long. We realized that when we got into bigger numbers, it got a bit long and a little bit laborious. So then we moved into formal written method, which is our columns, okay? But we looked at first at expanded method, which was a bit like grid method, but looking at it in the formal written method. So we still partitioned every part, and we still wrote down each individual question and did them in four or five different rows, okay? Again, a good method for understanding our cognitive understanding and our understanding of what's happening, but it was a bit long. And our method after that still looked at multiple digit multiplied by a single digit, and we did it quicker using a similar method to say addition or subtraction, where we stayed on one row to answer each individual part. So if we were looking at 32 times five, that first row would have five times 32, all in the first row, rather than having a second row for five times two, and then the second row for five times three, okay? That was another step forward, but now we're at our ultimate step. We're gonna add a multi-digit to the second part too, so it's gonna be a multi-digit times a multi-digit, okay? It is a leg up, it is our next progression, and there is a little trick to it, something that we need to learn and something that we need to understand, okay? So, let's start. Let's have a look at a green chili challenge. So let's use the example 32 times 25. And we're gonna start at our smallest value, but it's really important to understand what we're doing. Our first row is actually going to use this unit here times by 32, so it's gonna be five times 32. And our second row, our last row, is gonna be 20, which is what this two represents, 20 times 32. And then we're gonna add them together. So we're still partitioning it, but we're doing it a little more discreetly, and if we're not exactly sure what we're doing, we might make small mistakes, which is why it's really important at this stage to really understand exactly what we're doing and where our numbers and answers are coming from, rather than just following a process. So let's start together. Let's do five times two. Well, five times two is 10. So let's put our 10 in as we would do now if we were doing, say, for example, an addition or subtraction question at our shortest method. So I'm gonna put my one into my tens column as a small little one, just so I can remember to add it to my tens column when I do that, but I'm gonna put my zero in my units column. Now, I can move on to my second part of the question, five times three. Well, five times three is 15. I've got no hundred, so I can just put the answer straight in there, but I must remember to add on that one that I had in my tens column from before. So 15 plus one is 16. So the answer to five times 32 is 160, okay? So, good, we've done that first row. Now I'm gonna do 20 times 32, but I don't wanna look at it as a 20, and here's the thing that's going to get tricky. Okay, here's the thing that we need to understand. Here's the difference between this method and our previous method in terms of how hard it is. Okay, so we're gonna include what's called a placeholder because we want this whole question to be 10 times smaller to work with. We don't wanna work with 20 times 32, we're gonna still do two times 32. And to make it two times 32, we're gonna make our answer 10 times larger because we know it's not a two, it's actually a 20. So let's make our answer 10 times larger by putting a placeholder. I'm sure you've all done this, but you might not be sure why. Okay, so we're putting this placeholder in there because if we do two times 32, we need our answer to actually be 10 times larger than that. Okay, so put this placeholder in there. Now I can treat it like two times 32 again. 
2 times 2 is 4, put my 4 in the next available column, which is my 10s column. And again, this is where some people might make mistakes because they think, well, I've just put my 0 in my units column, but I always meant to put my answer in my units column. Well, that 0 is holding the place of the units, okay, because we're 10 times larger. So our next space is 10s. 2 times 2 is 4. And we can check that because 2 times 20 is 40. And that's what it said. Cool, we know we're doing something right. Okay, so the next part says 2 times 3, which is 6, put that in there, 640. Are we finished? No. Anyone who's done partition number 4 knows we've only done the individual elements, now we're going to put it back together. Again, starting our units, 0 and 0 is 0, 6 and 4 is 10, remember to walk, uh, move the 1 across, 1 and 6 is 7, plus the 1, 8, 800, okay? 32 times 25 is 800, and that's a green chilli challenge. Okay, let's look at an orange chili challenge. Now at this point, I want to highlight something. I want to talk to you about something and an expression we're gonna use quite a lot. And that is, is it harder or is it just longer? Okay, now in this example for the orange chili challenge, I pose to you that it's actually just a little bit longer. This isn't harder, what I'm about to show you, but it's just a little bit longer. And I've given it an orange chili because the only thing we need to understand today really is why this is only longer and not harder. So I've given it orange, although it is actually still probably only a green challenge. Okay, so let's have a look at it. It's 482 times 24. Okay, now let's think back to our understanding of what we're doing. We are breaking this number down into more manageable chunks. So we're going to isolate those two numbers again on the bottom row and we're going to break it up and we're going to multiply the top row by it in little chunks. Okay, so my 4 is going to times 482 first, which is going to make that first row, and my second row is going to be 20 times 482. Okay, but remember, we're going to add that placeholder to make it 10 times larger, so we can just do 2 times 482. Okay, so this is only longer because we've only added a digit to the top line. And we're going to see what happens when we add a digit to the bottom line in a moment. But let's answer this challenge first of all then. So 482 times 24. Start at our smallest value, and we're going to start with the 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Then we're going to move across. 4 times 8. 4 times 8 is 32. Add 3 across into my hundreds column, and 2 into my tens. Good. 4 times 4 is 16. Add the 3, 19. So my answer to 482 times 4 is 1,928, and completes that first row. Now, my next question is 20 times 482. So we don't like 20, so let's make it 10 times smaller and put it as a 2. But that means we need to make our answer 10 times larger so we actually get the correct answer. So I'm going to put my placeholder in place. Okay, great. Now it's just going to be 2 times 482. So 2 times 2 is 4. Add that in. 2 times 8 is 16. Put the 1 across. Put my 6 in place. Good. 2 times 4 is 8. Plus the 1, 9. 9,640. Now here's something really important. Look at these extra numbers that we've got in here. These were helping us solve previous parts of the question. And we should have put a line through them when we're finished with them. Okay, like I have. And we must remember at this point we do not add it to our total because those numbers have already been used and we've already got them added to whatever we needed them for. Okay, so we don't want to add them again now. So let's make sure we don't do that, guys. That's really, really important. A top tip. Okay, okay? and remember, add it together. So... Put my line across, make sure I add it. 8 add 0 is 8, 2 add 4 is 6, 9 add 6 is 15. Move my 1 across, put my 5 in place, and then 1 add 9 is 10, plus the 1 is 11. 11,568, and that is your orange chili challenge done. Okay, final stage, our red chili challenge. Now we are going to make this harder this time because there's something, there's an extra element we need to understand, okay? So I'm going to give us the question, 452 times 235. Now these are huge numbers now, so we've got to be really careful and we've got to be really precise. So we're going to carry on like we did before and we're going to understand that we're going to partition it all, okay? So all we're doing for this first line, for this first row, is we're still multiplying 5 by 452. Okay, so 5 times 2 is 10, good. 5 times 5 is 25, add the 1 is 26. 5 times 4 is 20, add the 2 is 22. So our first row, 5 times 462 is 2260. Okay, right, now our second row, same as before, we are now looking at this 3. But it's not a 3, it's a 30, so let's make it 10 times larger by putting in our placeholder, okay? Because it's a 30, it's 10 times larger than 3, which is what we want to be dealing with. Okay, so just like before, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 5 is 15, 3 times 4 is 12, plus the 1, 13. So 30 times 462 is 13,560. Okay, great. 
Now, we've got an extra number. We've got this two, this 200 here, okay? Now we want to do just like before and multiply it by the top row. So we're gonna do 200 times 452, but I need to think about my placeholders because I can't just put one placeholder because that would mean the two actually turns to a 20. But it's not a 20, it's a 200. It's in our hundreds column. So I need, that's right, two placeholders, okay? Because 200 is 100 times larger than two the number we're actually going to be multiplying with. Okay, so I need to put two placeholders in now. Now we can just carry on like before. Two times two is four, making sure I put it in the correct column because I've now got two placeholders occupying the units and the tens column, so I'm gonna put this straight into the hundreds column. So two times two is four, and I can check that because 200 times two is 400. Okay, great. Two times five is 10, so we've got a one across and put our zero in the right place. And two times four is eight, Add the one is nine. Okay, great, we've just done our third row. Okay, let's make sure we add it up. So zero plus zero plus zero is zero, obviously. Six plus six is 12, making sure not to include that other one. Two plus five plus four plus that one is another 12. And then two plus three, add the spare one is six. One plus nine is 10. So we get 106,220. Now, anything beyond this level, is just going to be longer. Now we can have a four digit number multiplied by a four digit number, and all that's gonna do is add another row where we need to add three placeholders because we're looking at thousands now. We can look at a million times a million if we wanted to, okay? It's not gonna make it any harder, it's just going to make it longer. But don't forget, sometime when we do things longer, we might make mistakes. So it's really important that we check our work and are really, really careful, okay guys? Well done. So let's recap some really important things from today, guys. First of all, it's really important to put our layout and our numbers in the correct columns. This is really, really important today because we've got such a huge amount of numbers that we're gonna be multiplying. And when you get into four digit numbers or five digit numbers and anything like that, you actually get a really big area where your answer is. And it comes out like a triangle formation as the number gets bigger and bigger. So if you're not in the right columns, it can look really messy and almost be impossible to make sure at the end when you're trying to add up, you're adding up the correct columns. So organization and layout is really important. The second thing to understand is knowledge of partitioning and knowledge of place value. Understanding that when we're timesing 32 by 25, we can break it down into those smaller chunks and understand what chunks we are actually multiplying at the time, okay? Next thing to remember is our placeholders. Placeholders are hugely important to understand, not just to do, but to understand, okay? We need to understand what we're doing. If we're doing 25 times 32, and we've got the 32 on the top and the 25 underneath, then we need to understand that when we come over to that two part and we're times in the two by 32, then it's not a two, it's a 20, okay? We're only wanting it to be a two because two is easier to multiply, okay? So if we are making it a two, we've actually made it 10 times smaller, okay? So when we make our answer, we need our answer to actually be 10 times larger, what it's supposed to be, okay? So placeholders are really important to understand. And the final thing, final recap, make sure that when we've done our answer, we don't just finish with the partitioned answer, we actually add it together to give us our grand total, because that's what we're looking for. It's not, we're not looking at the, for the partition numbers, we're looking for that grand total. Okay, well done. Right, I'm gonna put some questions for you on the board here, guys. I'm gonna put four questions. There's a green, an orange, and a red. So challenge yourself. If you get all four of these right, you are ready for our next step, and that is multiplying decimals. That is our next step, our next progression in our understanding of multiplying. Well done today, guys. Thanks very much. Make sure to check out the rest of our videos on the channel for all your mathematical needs, and give us a subscribe if you've liked this video, guys, because there's gonna be plenty more like this. Okay, thanks very much, guys, but for now, Math Zero, gone.